As the African Union Chairperson's Youth Envoy, I have the privilege of traveling across the continent to engage with young people and leaders on issues that matter to us. And let me tell you, my recent visit to South Africa was nothing short of amazing. The purpose of my visit was to engage with youth leaders. And before I get to that, let me share with you something I believe in and practice. The power of collaboration and building networks across the continent and beyond. Now, during my first day in South Africa, I started the week fulfilled with gratitude. I am passionate about community building and I got to spend some time with youth in Daviton community, Johannesburg, working in the vegetable gardens. As an advocate for climate change, I planted some trees to offset my carbon footprints and took some time in the vegetable gardens, which contribute towards food security in marginalized communities. The other part of my job includes meetings with counterparts from different world regions to see how we come together, the power of collaboration. My name is uh, Michael Charles. I am the head of delegation for the International Federation of Red Cross Red Crescent Societies based in South Africa, um, based in a country where obviously has a very large, huge population, um, youth population, um, and has a lot of unemployment as well. Um, of the youth. Um, the statistics that say is about 60-65% of the youth are unemployed in South Africa. So we're really, you know, working with the South Africa Red Cross and our focus is really, you know, looking at the youth, looking at the issues and seeing how we can bring them in into our programming. As the International Federation of Red Cross Red Crescent Societies on the continent, we have 1.7 million volunteers and a lot of them are the youth. So a lot of my role on a daily basis is how do we engage the youth, how do we bring them in, and how do we make sure that we give them a meaningful and dignified life in terms of opportunities. People say they're the futures of tomorrow, or they're the leaders of tomorrow. I say they're the leaders of today. So it's really a change of mindset from leadership that we really need to in, in, incorporate in our, in our daily world, and it's a decision that we need to make. You know, you have to be around the table, otherwise we will not be able to, you know, to support their ambitions and supporting their ambitions is, is, um, is growth for Africa. If we really want to grow, if we really want to get out of this vicious circle, we need to involve the youth, not yesterday, um, not tomorrow, but we need to involve them today. Um, because today is what will help us in terms of shaping the future. And shaping the future is important for Africa. We need to take the bull by the horn. We need to you know, be the, the voice of reasoning and we really need to make sure that we work with our fellow leaders to make sure that they see also the power of the youth. We're seeing it in many countries in, in Africa where the youth are demonstrating against leadership. Yes. You know, and we, we don't want that. I certainly don't want that. And that's why I'm being inclusive. And that's what my message is to all the other leaders that I have access to. We need to bring the youth around the table. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Keep up the good work. Thank you. We believe in you. We believe in the youth of Africa. And certainly you should be welcome. Thank you. It was such a pleasure to see you. We also had the opportunity to interact with over 500 alumni from the Mandela Washington Fellowship at the IREX led Youth Symposium in Johannesburg in order to support strengthening of youth engagement and capacity building in communities through partnerships. Sabina, I was like, yo, the days of paying people talking about your fears are over because everyone's office of waiting and saying, when are you taking us on your mission? This is actually nice. <laughs> There's more that the AU can do, but even as individuals, in the sense of the touch, we can't Oh, we have lost my child. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's go. Sorry, you need to get the mic right now. You go back.
to be continued. I want to listen to be continued afterwards. I think it's the same. Now within my roles, the academic youth on boy. First of all, the academic youth executes on behalf of all member states, and these are the countries. On this visit, it was an absolute pleasure to join President Biden's recently appointed U.S. Special Envoy on Global Youth Affairs. So I am former Congresswoman uh, Abby Finkenauer, who is now the new U.S. Special Envoy for Global Youth. I took on this role November in 2022, and it has been absolutely extraordinary to get this opportunity to go across the globe to build partnerships with young people who are going to literally be the ones leading the world. Um, but there, it's not going to be at the same time. They really already are in so many different ways. I think there's this interesting space we have where we are young women who have entered the space of public service and can now do our part as well to keep uplifting more young women in, in the African continent, yes, in the United States, yes, but all across the globe. And yeah. I think that is, to me, um, one of the most exciting pieces of this job. Although this is my first time to the African continent, um, I know for a fact it will not be my last. And I can't wait to learn more, see more, and um, I'm sure uh, special the, the, the special envoy will um, help me do that in a way where again we can keep working together in in all different spaces. With so many beautiful encounters and conversations with young people, I knew exactly what to say to the Mandela Washington Fellowship Alumni Group of 2020. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's so amazing because I feel at home being a Mandela Washington fellow alumni. Woo! It's so exciting to be here guys, like for me it's like just, you know, being here with my family. And of course I have a speech, but I really wanted to take this time just to really engage with my fellow youth leaders and also just to share about my experience as a Mandela Washington fellow and how it has led me to the position I'm in now, and also as a way to really, really advocate for more young people in political spaces, as well as more young people building the Africa that we want. So I'm gonna start off by just talking about the power of networking. And do not underestimate, whilst you're here with your fellow alumni from different parts of the continent, Take time to engage, take time to learn from one another, and take time to connect. Because through that connection, you will get information, and that information can actually take you to the next level. When um, I got appointed into my position in the African Union Cabinet, when the role was advertised, the person who actually shared this position with me was a Mandela Washington Fellow alumni. And she just said, hey, did you see this? I'm like, uh, okay, she's like, yeah, I think, you know, you should, you should really go for this. I'm like, okay, but I have a banking experience, I've done, a, you know, a lot of voluntary work in you. She's like, yeah, apply, like literally just apply for this. I think you'll be well fit for this role. Again, which goes back to the path networking, the path connecting. Because at times you also need that push from your fellow youth leaders. I went from private sector and now I'm in the political space within the African Union and it took knowledge sharing learning a lot within this exchange program, networking, and having a network of friends that are made across the continent. It's our time, as the African youth, it's our time to build the Africa that we want. And of course, I'll, I mean, you know, working in the African Union, I'll speak about Agenda 2063 and Aspiration 6, because Agenda 2063, Aspiration 6, of the African Union, which is a decision that has been made by our 54 member states and governments and the head of states. And Aspiration 6 says, an Africa whose development shall rely on the potential of its people, especially its youth and its women. And this is what we're championing now. 
We speak about the largest population and demographic in Africa are the youth, 60%. But beyond this demographic, what are we going to do with them? We're going to make sure that the potential that we have, including the potential in this room, will build the Africa that we want, including a democratic governance. We need more young people making decisions. We need more young people in public office. We need more young people on top. So come let us make those decisions and let us ensure that we really build the Africa that we want for the generation of now and for the generation of the future.